Hello, everybody. We have another presentation for you. This is going to be a presentation on the frequency converter that I have in my hand right here. Um, before I plug it in, I'll try to pivot things so you can see it uh, on the camera. Um, this end here is the power, and there is an inline fuse, fuse to 5 amps, on and off, lighted switch, so it indicates when it's on and off. Um, front panel or A panel, I'm pointing to right here a three-digit LED um, voltmeter. Uh, this plug is temporary. Right now it's providing 12 volts for all the logic circuits inside the uh, box. Um, I have found a small 12-volt um, supply that should be able to fit right inside the box and replace this. Um, but for now we're going to use an external um, they call them beer pyre module, little 12 volt module, and we'll derive the logic power uh, for this box right now um, with this plug. And on top we have a huge charging capacitor. This is a 1500 microfarad capacitor rated at uh, 400 volts, I believe. Um, uh, 450, 450 volts. And we have an adjustment uh, pot here that I'm turning with my fingers right now. And we'll demonstrate that uh, when we actually connect everything up. Uh, it controls, obviously, your sense is right, controls the voltage. Um, we have two inputs. We have a main input that can come from a spooky device like this or uh, another function generator or a cheap 555 timer, anything you want. And then we have uh, the secondary, um, let me tip it a little bit. There you go. We have a secondary input that is a uh, gating input. Um, the red dot it indicates the primary input. There is a yellow dot next to here, but it's hard to see on the uh, white plastic. Uh, maybe I'll change the color of that. And on the output, we have a plug, um, a standard uh, USA um, three-prong plug, and that's our output. So to connect the unit, pretty simple. We simply plug it in. I'm plugging it into my kilowatt meter so I can monitor uh, amps and voltage and so forth, current, watts. I'm going to plug in my power supply. And you'll notice immediately that the LED display lit up. It's a little bit hard to see, but right now it's reading... 0.1 volt, 0.2 volt. That's the charge that's on the capacitor right now. And we will connect it up to, I'm going to use the Spooky momentarily under manual control. It runs just as well under software control. There's two cables provided. Separate them here. Primary cable. And I'll put this into channel 1. And we'll use this as our gating frequency, not our gating frequency, our primary frequency. And I'll plug this into, plugged it into um, the primary frequency input of the frequency converter. And now I will put a gating signal in here. Not that I really need to do that, but I'll plug that in here. So it's all connected up. I'm going to use this light, uh, this little night light, which the unit comes with because it gives you an, a way of monitoring what is going on. Uh, before we do a really serious demonstration on running a heat blanket or running uh, some LED lights or whatever, uh, we'll going to just use this little night light. I'm going to plug that in, and I'm going to turn the unit on. Now, nothing is really happening. Uh, the capacitor is now charging up. Um, you might be able to see that. Yes, you can. You can see the capacitor charging up. Um, and I guess I'm just going to have to start firing it. So what the frequency converter does, it changes the 60 cycle AC coming in from this line here, the plug, the AC wall uh, plug, the one that you would plug into a wall outlet, and changes the frequency of um, the 60 cycle AC to anything you want but it's no longer a nice sine wave AC, it's a square wave AC. Um, so you do not want to run your television 
off of this device or any really serious electronic computer uh, uh, product um, unless it has an intervening power supply. A lot of power supplies will run just fine off of uh, step uh, AC or uh, pulse DC. But for now we're just we're just talking resistive loads. What do I mean by resistive load that this unit is intended to run? Well a resistive load would be a heat blanket and to my right um, you can see it over here. I have a heat blanket sitting on a chair. We'll demonstrate that in a second video. Um, I'm going to start the uh, frequency converter and I'm going to have it change 60 cycles to one cycle or second. That's what I already got preset on the spooky. And turn it on. And this is flashing at one cycle per second. And I'm going to adjust the voltage to what come, normally comes out of a, um, an AC wall outlet. Anything from 110 to 120 volts. Right now I have it at, it's flashing between 115 and 116. And I've changed the 60 cycles that comes out of your wall outlet to a uh, one cycle. Um, frequency. I'm going to change the one cycle and I'm just going to dial it in. Now this could all be under uh, computer control and now I've changed 60 cycles to 4 cycles and I've changed 60 cycles to 10 cycles and you can see it's flashing um, a lot faster. I can control the voltage applied anywhere from roughly 50 volts up to 140 volts. Let's turn this all the way down and you'll notice that you can see it too. You'll see this drop down to somewhere around 50 volts eventually. It requires so little current to drive this uh, 7 uh, it's probably closer to a 4 watt bulb that the charge in this capacitor is uh, uh, providing some of the juice never mind what's coming from the uh, AC wall outlet but we'll demonstrate a little bit higher power before we finish okay so then I can dial it all the way up to 110 and I can get it to a max at this this particular unit somewhere around 142 Uh, volts and you can see it's uh, way brighter when I I'm overdriving it a little bit when I run it that high so if I was running this under software control the software program would be telling the spooky what frequencies to run and this light would be flashing at those frequencies now this light could be an LED light it could be a heat blanket it could be a heating pad it could be um, an infrared light, all which I can demonstrate in other videos. So with that little demonstration, let's dial it up to 60 hertz, just exactly what comes out of the, the wall outlet. So now the light bulb is lit up at 60 hertz. Let me turn the intensity so you can possibly see. There you go. Then I'm controlling it. And it's running at the same frequency that it would run if it was plugged into your AC wall outlet, 60 hertz. But what's really nice, what if I wanted to run it up to 100 hertz, or 1000 hertz, or 1060? I just switched it to 1060 hertz. So we have a way now of delivering frequency, electric fields, um, via a frequency converter. And how can we deliver electric fields? Well, if this was a heating blanket and you were laying underneath the heating blanket, instead of getting a 60 cycle pulsating DC, I mean AC voltage, you'd be getting a whatever you dialed it into. Uh, one of my favorites is the 528 Shulman DNA repair frequency. And then I modulate it uh, at Shulman Residence of 
oh, how can I modulate it? Well, I have a channel 2 that's a gating frequency. Now, under software control, you can do the gating with the computer. Um, but if you don't have a spooky and you have a simple function generator, single channel or, or, or not, you can feed a primary frequency into the main channel of the frequency converter, a primary frequency that you want, and you can feed a secondary with a uh, uh, gating frequency with a simple 555 timer. You can buy those 555 timers on the internet uh, for less than $5 on a circuit board all mounted ready to fly, ready to go. So we have a lot of options on how to control this. But I'm going to control it with the Spooky. So I'm going to turn on channel 2 on this Spooky. And right now, that light is running at 1060 hertz primary frequency. And I, I just picked a frequency arbitrarily. And it's flashing at Silverman Residence of 7.83. And I'm sure you all know the significance of the Shulman Resident Frequency. Shulman Resident Frequency is the average noise, uh, the average frequency of the planet generated by lightning, earthquakes. It's um, generated by a combination of input sources. And it is also the frequency that we basically evolved, our species evolved, um, our, we live in. Um, we, we live in an, a, a field, a magnetic field, uh, an electric field of Shulman resonance. Um, Shulman resonance does have a magnetic component and it does have an electric component. Okay, this is the end of um, presentation number one. I would like you to, uh, or I would suggest you look at video presenta presentation number two, where we'll actually do a little bit more and we'll show the signals on an oscilloscope as well as um, probably connect up the uh, heat blanket. So with that, thank you for watching and have a fine day.